Hello, everyone. Bishop Jerome A. Taylor. I pray that you're having the best morning ever. Welcome to Connecting the World to Him broadcast. Yes, I am back. Praise God. I miss y'all too. Praise the Lord. But let me tell you something. Let me first of all, in protocol, say thank you so very kindly to the best church staff in the whole entire planet. The HHIM church staff, my leaders, uh, ministers of the gospel, elders, let me tell you something. What a tremendous job you all did this past month, month and a half. They say I've been going for two or three months. I don't think I've been going that long. But look, it, it seems like I've been going forever. But hey, I'm right here. Thank you again as I, as a, as a, sitting back as a proud spiritual father watching my spiritual sons and daughters proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, talking about their hymn church experience and what their lives have done, what their lives have been in this place that we call Him Church. Him Church is more than just brick and mortar. It's more than just the bishop or the pastor. It's comprised of people that love God, a community of faith, a community of, uh, of people that, that, are, that, are, that are engaged with the vision, that are engaged and tuned in to the will of God. And we have a saying around here, it's never about me. It's all about we. It's a we thing around here. It's never about one person, praise God. This church is bigger than Bishop Jerome A. Taylor. So I'm excited to allow you all to see some of my sons and daughters, some of my best sons and daughters up, proclaiming their experience in this hymn church and yet proclaiming the gospel about how good God has been to their families. And it's authentic. And most of those wonderful ministers and elders that you've seen, they have been with us for a number of years, decades, and some two decades. Some, I mean, it's been amazing how long some of them have been with us over the course of time. But again, I want to thank you all for being so wonderful to tune in every week, uh, every Sunday morning, and also on the Tuesdays, uh, and not being selective of who's up, who the bishop or the pastor sets up to preach the gospel. And you all have been amazing as we've watched, amen, these wonderful men and women of God proclaim the gospel. And again, I am grateful. I want to give kudos to my hymn church staff. I love you all. Uh, those that are tuned in, my ministers, I love you all. My hymn church family. I love y'all so much. I'm telling you, I, we had a food bank giveaway this past week, and uh, I wasn't get a chance to come up here to see everybody or see some of the folk that, that were, uh, of course, served through our community food bank giveaway. But look, I am eternally grateful for the love, support, and all that we're doing to make our lives, and not just our lives, but our community better. Yes, we're about bettering people's lives. Amen? It's only two letters different between bitter and better. And we choose to be better. We choose to do the will of our Father. Hey, you know what I'm getting ready to ask you. Yes, I need you to hit the share button, hit the like button. Come on real quick. Let somebody know, amen, that Connecting the World to Him broadcast is on there. We have some amazing things to talk about. Can y'all believe it is December? Yes, it is December. Isn't it just amazing? Today is December the 6th, and I'm telling you, it's been moving. I mean, this whole year has gone by. With this pitiful pandemic uh, has taken us to the month of December. Not has the pandemic taken us, but the Holy Ghost and God the Father. Come on, Jesus, our only Lord and Savior, the only King of Kings, has gracefully, come on, got us to the month of December. Man, I mean, some of y'all remember when all this stuff hit in March and back in uh February when all was coming out, and, you know, we, we have not still been in church since March. We've been away, uh, but let me tell you something. I am so grateful for the Lord Jesus Christ, our King, just carrying us through gracefully. Some of you have missed the beat of eating and sleeping and enjoying your life, you know what I mean? I mean, you've been tremendously blessed even during COVID-19, and it goes to show you how powerful our Lord is, how, how graceful God is over your life. And for that, you know, we really need to give Him thanks this morning. Come on, y'all, right where you are. Yeah, the living room, your bedroom, come on where your PJs on, you're chilling, come on with your mojo, with your coffee, with your tea. We need to stop right there while you're eating breakfast, whatever you're doing, you're driving in your car. We need, I mean, you know, keep your hand on the steering wheel, maybe lift one up or just praise them out loud with a shout. But we need to give God some praise. Come on, right where you are this morning, just give God some praise. Amen for being so wonderful to protect your family. Come on, glory be to God. Right where you are, just come on, he deserves that. You owe him that, come on, for protecting you, keeping you. Even throughout these months, nothing adversely has happened to your family. We owe you, God, 
praise. Come on, we owe him praise. Glory be to God. We owe you the fruit of our lips for how wonderful you've been. Birthing ideas and birthing thoughts and keeping our families protected from harm's way. Glory to God. And even if it COVID hit some of us, some of us have been redeemed. Come on, by the blood of the Lamb. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Some of us, it hit some of our church members. But guess what? They're well now. Praise God. They've gotten through it. They've recovered. Come on, without any adverse impact, without death. Come on. Even though the Bible says, I walk, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God is with me. I'm telling you, so we need to praise God for that. Can you give God a hand clap of praise right where you are in your living room, at your home? Come on, wherever you, you might be on the job this morning working. God is absolutely awesome. Yes, he is so awesome. He is amazing. God is tremendous. He's all-powerful, all-knowing, and he's an awesome daddy, omniscient, omnipotent. I mean, you know, you're talking about the all-protective hands of Almighty God. His hands have been on us, people. We need to praise him. Don't you get wrapped up with us thinking about Santa Claus this season. I ain't trying to pour no cold water on nobody's Christmas, but look here. We need to give God the best praise. I don't care if you don't get a gift this year. I mean, just knowing that you have the gift of life is more than enough. You got food on your table, shelter over your head. Come on, people. Got water. Come on, in your covets. Come on, water. And you got ability to go take a bath, drink water. You got the ability to go put something on the stove. Glory be to God. You got the ability to be out of the elements of life. Man, I'm telling you, you don't get something under the tree. We still need to break out and give him praise. Just the fact that he's kept you, praise God. We can't get caught up into the commercialization of Christmas. Don't let the world hype you. And, you know, I know God's going to bless you, though. That's the other thing. God's still going to bless you. You're going to be blessed. Somebody's going to give you a gift. But don't get caught up like the world do. Don't let that be the focus of the thing. You know what? Everybody else want to X-mus, but I'm telling you, it's about Christ's mass. Praise God. It's about Jesus Christ, the anointed one and all his anointing. And I'm thanking God for this Christmas atmosphere. I'm thanking God for the celebration of life for him. And some people say, Bishop, well, he wasn't born on Christmas. Well, whatever day he was born on, he was born. We just choose to celebrate him on December the 25th. And that's the time we celebrate, praise God. And so you know he was born, that's a fact. Uh, we may not know the true birthday, but you know, uh, the old folk used to have dates. Some of them had two dates in that Bible that was on the coffee table. And uh, that, that coffee table revealed birth dates and dates and death dates and all that. They kept all that in the big family Bible. And some of the mothers and fathers had two birthdays. Come on. So somebody said, no, they were born on this date. They were born that day. So they celebrated both of them. Praise God. Amen. So we just going to celebrate them on December 25th since we really don't know. Some uh, scholars say that he was born in this date and that date. We just choose to celebrate them on December 25th. Praise God. To give honor and thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin. Yeah, praise God. Came into the world. Come on now to suffer, amen, for us, to put the, all the sins of the world on his back. Come on, he died, he bled, he rose, and he is our Savior. He is our King and our soon coming King. Come on, everybody, hit the share button. You know what time it is. Hit that share button. Bishop is back. Glory be to God. Hit the share button. You know what to do. Come on, give me some likes, some thumbs, some smiley faces. Come on, let us know that where you're looking at it from, where you're viewing this wonderful telecast, this broadcast from this morning. I am excited to be here this morning with you because we got some stuff we got to talk about. Praise God. Hey, guess what? We're talking about planning. Amen. We're talking about planning, so we're going to be giving you some, some scripture reference. We're going to kind of take our time because you know what the Lord told me? He said, son, let my people know, even in the midst of this pandemic, we still got to plan for the upcoming year. We cannot sit back and let life happen. We have to plan our success. We have to plan and still have on the, uh, and submit the things to God so that he can put his hands on it and bless us. Amen. We're, just, we're not going to let 2021 just come in. And we're not going to let the pandemic punch the air out of us. Come on, the wind out of us so that we don't plan. No, we're not going to just sit back and say, well, que sera, sera, whatever will be, whatever will be. No, we're going to prophesy, praise God, to 2021. And we're going to still prophesy into this December Come on, the 6th on to the 31st, that this still going to be the best Christmas ever. Gee whiz, is Christmas. It's going to be a good Christmas, y'all. I'm I'm, and that's what the Lord wants us to do. See, we have to prophetically speak to where we want to go. We have to perspe pro pro prophetically talk about and put into the winds of the air, amen, our destiny. And, and still be bold, even in the midst of this pandemic, to call those things that be not as though they were. 
We have to say what God is saying in the midst of what it don't look like. See, the Bible says that the just walks by faith. Come on, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. We learn to live our lives not in front of our eyelids, but behind our eyelids. That is the order of God for the believer. So even though all this COVID-19 is going on, even though the pandemic is spiking, the child of God will live like those of our ancestors in the land of Goshen when they were in the same Egypt, but in the land of Goshen there was blessings and things happening in that particular area. I believe that he's the same God, God of, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and he's still the God of Jacob. And he's still the God of us, praise God, the same God that delivered the children of Israel, that walked across dry ground. Come on now, when they were exiting out of Israel, exiting, exiting out of Egypt, the same God, come on now, that caused a man dry bones. When, when, a, when a dead man uh, got thrown to the dry bones of a man, dead bones of a man, the cask or the grave of a man, that his life, come on, was revived. The same God that caused, come on, when the prophet began to speak to the cloud and he thought that he saw rain coming, and come on, when he closed up the heavens with his words to stop it from raining for three years, then when he, the same God that spoke to the man, the man began to declare to the atmosphere, and the same man that spoke to the God caused the rain to come back. The same God, glory be to God, that raised Jesus Christ up from the dead. Come on now, that went down to hell to defeat Satan and his demonic angels. Come on now, got the keys back to life. Come on and from death, hell, and the grave, and came back up and rose on the third day with all power in his hand. The same, see, that's the God I'm trusting right there. Amen. See, I don't know what other God everybody else trusts. I'm trusting that God right there to bring us through this pandemic, this pitiful pandemic, and to cause us to have a successful, come on, Christmas, and a successful December the 31st, or a successful December period. The whole month's going to be blessed. And it's going to be the best Christmas ever. I'm telling you right now what I believe in my spirit. And we're going to prepare and plan for 2021. We're not going to let this roll in. We're going to plan. I'm going to give you some scriptural references. I'm going to give you 20 thoughts about planning, what you need to know about planning. Planning is the will of God for the believer. Yes, planning is the will of God for the believer. We're not just going to sit back and just, again, let life happen. We as believers are targeted towards our blessings. Just like the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. This thing right here, the little pink thing right here, get a lot of folk in trouble. So, but at the same time, it is something that God has given us because how the believer does business in this life, we do business in the realm of the spirit by the words of our mouth. And now we have to understand that we have to believe, plan, submit these plans to God, and then we have to prophetically speak into the atmosphere the things that we trust that God is going to do for us. Nothing just happens. Glory to God. I'm not going to play it safe. See, I don't have to let the news tell me that it's going to be all right. My Bible, come on, your Bible, your B-I-B-L-E already tells us, come on, the basic instructions before leaving earth already tells us it's already all right. See, it didn't say it's going to be all right, when the pandemic leaves, it's telling you it's already all right, even in the midst of the pandemic. And so now we have a choice to believe either what this pandemic is doing, and we're not, we're not, demi we're not, you know, we're undercutting or we're not, we're not, uh, you know, cold to the heart of the things that this pandemic has done. I call it a pitiful pandemic because it has taken lives unnecessary. I think some unnecessary things have happened. I am, I am also, uh, my heart, of course, goes to every family that is been adversely impacted by this thing, have lost a loved one, our prayers and thoughts are with you. I do understand the loss of anyone you love. I understand that firsthand. But again, I still want you to rise up. Come on, out of the sorrows of ashes or the ashes of sorrow. I still want you to rise up. The Bible says that he'll turn your mourning into dancing. Glory to God. I want you to rise up to know that a better day is in route for me and my family. I want you to rise up from your mind to know God got me. He said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. I want you to rise up in your spirit to know that my destiny is going to be strong. I want you to rise up to say every prophetic, every promise, every word that he spoke to me is not going to fall to naught. I want you to rise up to know that God is not a man that he should lie. I want you to rise up and remember all the prophetic words that he spoke in your life with prophets and prophetess and the thing that he's prophetically spoken to you in prayer 
in dreams and visions. Those things that that man of God walked by you in the Walmart or walked by you in, in the marketplace and told you what thus said the Lord or that woman of God. I want you to be reminded of those things because God has not changed his mind. Glory to God. Folks, God has not changed his mind, people of God. He's not this God that's playing with your emotions. He's not this God that's making a promise and going to fall back on it. Glory to God. He, he's not this God that's going to say something to you and back up because of the conditions of the world. See, God doesn't function like man. My wife's granddaddy told me some years ago, I think I've shared it with you. He told me years ago, looked at my face as a young man. He was, a, of course, a seasoned preacher and told me, looked at that thing. It, it, sent, it sent chills all through my body. He said, son, remember this, that God is not like man. Man, that thing did something to me at, that, at my age. At the time, it might have been 21, 20, I don't remember. But it did something on the inside of me. And that old preacher, I respect Mr. Uh, Reverend Leroy Aiken, but did something to me. He said, son, remember, God is not like man. And sometimes we treat him like humans. And sometimes humans have let you down. Humans have dropped the ball. Humans have made promises to you and didn't come through. Humans have said things to you and not followed through. Humans have made some things, you know, not right with you. So now we treat God sometimes like the last bad human experience. But the devil is a liar. We serve a God who's never lost a fight. He's never lost a battle. He doesn't tell lies. The Bible says that he's not a liar. He's not man. He's not man. He is not man <clears throat> that he should lie. Come on, y'all. Hit the share button. You already know what to do. God is not lying to you. God is telling you the truth about what he's going to do for you and your family. And it gets so exciting because <clears throat> if he told it to you, you know, <clears throat> he's big enough to create it. If it doesn't exist, he can make it happen, praise God. I mean, he only created a world. He only created, you know, all the, all the cattle on a thousand hills. He only created a universe. He only created Pluto and Jupiter and Mars. He only created this, you know, the osmos, uh, the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the cosmos and all that good stuff, the planets and all that stuff, you know, Jupiter, Mars, Pluto, planet, all that good stuff. You know, all, he only created that. He only created all the animal world, praise God, and put people on it. I mean, he only did all that. You know what I mean? Like, like he can't create the little stuff that we requested. Praise God. He is God and God alone. He is God and God alone. He's powerful. The most powerful person on the planet. Nobody can dethrone him. Nobody can beat him, child of God. And that's why I want you to be encouraged. God got your back. And you know like I know. You know like I know. He's been tremendously good to some of us. Some of, come on, y'all. Let's, let's just tell the truth. He's been tremendously, I mean, yes, it's December, but you haven't missed a beat, child of God. You have not missed a meal. You have not missed, come on, you've got gas in your car. The car's been rolling. Come on, the house, the roof ain't even leaking. You probably got to leak somewhere, but it ain't leaking. I don't know. You know, God is, God is dust. I mean, he's keeping you covered. And he's going to do everything that he promised. Come on, y'all. Y'all know that you hit the share button real quick. Let somebody know that we're on the air. Hit the like button real quick. Let's get into this. Because i got to give you something. I can't leave you, amen, without anything to share with you. Again, I'm Bishop Jerome Taylor. I'm happy to be back with you. I love y'all, my family out there, my folk in Duval County, Jacksonville. Duval. I love y'all, Monks Corner, South Carolina. Love you. Here in the Berkeley County area, I know I love y'all. Wherever you're watching from, whether it's Philly, come on, Louisiana, California, I don't know, uh, 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 Miami. I don't know where you're watching from, but we love you. We are appreciative for you tuning in from state to state all across the nation. Amen. So we're talking about 20 things you need to know about planning. Are you ready for this? Now, I'm going to ask you to get a pen, get a piece of paper, you know, take out your technical device, your Bible. We're going to go over to some scriptural references. We're just going to take our time and kind of walk through these things. Now, I know I didn't finish the thing on the things about the Bible. So what the Lord told me to do with that, I'm going to somehow post it online and we're going to get our technical department to post it online. I think I'm left on number 17, 18. It was 26 things you need to know about reading the Word. So we're going to post those things online so that you can go and digitally download it. You'll have them. We're not going to go back to that lesson because we're on to something new now. And I do apologize for not finishing that lesson. But we're going to make sure that you have access to those things online. Somehow we'll give it to you to make sure you go digitally download 26 things you know about reading the Word. So that's important. But we're on this now uh, as the month of December is here. And as we know that you need to plan, you need to plan about tomorrow. Come on. We're not going to let tomorrow happen. We're going to plan about it. Now, let's just jump in here 
uh, for the first point, and we're going to go to a scripture reference. So point number one, 20 things you need to know about planning. Number one, plans, plans must be established. They got it right there at the bottom of your screen. Plans must be established. Mm-mm-mm. That is so good. Plans must be established. Come on, say that with me while you're home. Plans must be established. So uh, if you have your technical device real quick, let's go to a quick scriptural reference. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 3. We're going to read that for you hearing. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 3 is what we want to focus on. Again, hit the share button. Come on, hit the like button. Let people know that Connecting the World of Him broadcast is indeed on the air. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> we'll start at verse 1. It's all good. It says, we'll start at verse 1. The plans of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord's weight weighs the spirit. And verse 3 is my impact verse. Verse 3 says, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Ooh, that's good. Commit your works unto the Lord. Come on. Commit your works, work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Ooh, that's so good. Now, when you look up the word establish, when you look up the word establish in the, uh, this is, of course, uh, the, the, the Greek, the Hebrew, excuse me, he Hebrew, it has a meaning of being stable. Come on, say stable. It has a, it's a meaning of being stable or fixed or secure or firm. See, when I think about the word establish, uh, I, I really think about stability. Most of us are not stable. Glory to God. You have people in this life that are not stable. They are very unstable. There's no stability. And so when you have no stability, you have no ability. Glory be to God. Amen. When you have no establishment in your life, you have no stability in your life, and you have no ability in your life. Uh-huh. Yes, because plans must be established, firm, fixed, secure, firm, secure. Who makes that happen? God. He makes it happen when you, right, when you sense that you got plans. Don't be afraid to plan. When you talk to God, get in prayer, Lord, I'm, giving, I'm asking you for, you know, a sense of direction about 2021. Uh, you get into prayer, you, you, you begin to get thoughts. You Don't be afraid to write them down, amen, because he gave you a brain. He gave you a beautiful, come on, three pounds, amen? A beautiful three pounds. That's a beautiful three pounds. Yeah, yeah, your brain weighs about three pounds. I know some of us a little extra heavy, but for the most part, most people got a three-pounder up there, amen? And so with that being said, he ministers to your mind. He ministers to your spirit about thoughts. And then you take those thoughts back. You just don't go run with them. You say, Lord, I believe these are the thoughts that you gave me in prayer. I believe these are the things you've been speaking to my heart. You know, you'll know when it's real, when it's serious. I want to give you a little side. Let's chase this rabbit real quick, and we'll come back to the lesson. Uh, still in the same vein of what we're talking about. Come on, hit the share button real quick. Come on, hit the like button. Y'all know what to do. But when you can't sleep it off, shake it off, when you can't sleep it off or shake it off, when you try to go to sleep and sleep off that thought, and it don't go away, let me... Let me, I'm talking to somebody. Glory to God. When you wake up in the morning, that thought is still heavy on you. Glory to God. And when you're walking through the day doing something totally just opposite of that thought, and that thought keeps rising up, and that thing like almost like becomes permanent in your spirit, God is trying to get you to do something. I mean, when this thing won't leave you, you'll know when, when God is trying to get you in a certain direction, people of God, and you can't ignore what he's speaking to you. When, it, when you're constantly dreaming, you know, you're like, you can't, like, go to sleep and the thing is gone. He's trying to deal with you about something, and then we have to learn how to trust the process of God to get to us, to, to, to navigate us to where we need to be. That's how God navigates. He, he can't navigate you through a dream. He can't navigate you through a prophetic word, amen, through someone who's speaking a word or saying, well, the, or thus said the Lord. Somebody gave you your prophetic word. He can't lead you like that. But this thing about plans you will, I'm talking about God will use a movie, he'll use a song, he'll use something to kind of remind you about what he's been telling you, about those thoughts that are heavy in your spirit. Come on. And you know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about just 
want to go around the corner and, and get a piece of chicken or something like that. I mean, I'm talking about something deep. Like, even if he's telling you to own a restaurant for chicken, that's something, that's something different. But you'll know when that thought is so deep in your spirit. And like I said, you can't sleep it off. You can't talk it off yourself. You can't ignore it. It's just there. And so with that being said, you know, the Bible says here in 16 and 3 again, commit your work to the Lord. Commit it. Lord, I'm committing these thoughts to you. I believe that you want me to do A, B, and C, and F. A, B, C, and Z, A, B, C, and H, whatever the case may be. And then the Bible says here that your plans will be established because he's going to tell you, he's going to, he's going to navigate you. Lord, this is your will, direct me to the right people. Lord, this is your will, lead me to the person that's going to help me to get this thing going, to get this thing established. Lord, uh, if you call me to Monk's Corner, then open up the doors. Okay, well, I'm going to shut Jefferson Smurf it down because uh, you wanted to come in 99. Uh, uh, you wanted to come in, in, in 90, uh, 2000, but I want you here in 99. Okay, Lord, well, I, I, Lord, I'm, I want to work another year and make some more money. So he shuts the whole company down. And, and, and I knew right then, it, it wasn't no, I, I got a little nervous because I felt like Jonah on the boat. I felt like, you know, I'm the one why the company shut down, and I had to get my tail amongst the corner, praise God. And he kept giving us green lights, green lights. People kept donating stuff. Come on, even a, a, a college down in Jacksonville, uh, I was, uh, I can't remember, junior college, donated through my pastor, gave us a letter of, of uh, 501c3. We were able to take that letter. They was given to have an auction at the college. I'll never forget it. And the people allowed us to go to the college and pick up all the chairs we wanted, all the furniture, everything we wanted. And matter of fact, uh, I think two of them chairs around here somewhere. Oh, yeah, I remember old, old purple chairs around here. I don't know where that chair is at. But uh, it's over there in the corner somewhere. But anyway, it was chairs, old chairs we had to get. They let us go through the high school, through the school. We had a big auction, pick out chairs. We picked all the chairs, tables. We had a, I mean, when I tell you, we, we moved to Monk's Corner, we had a, a, a uh, big, the biggest uh, uh, traveling, uh, what they call them, um, U-Haul. It was a, a rider at the time. But it was, uh, we had the longest one they had. We had it filled up with half our household goods and half of the ministry stuff. But God kept opening doors for us to get here. I had a friend of mine who donated, still got the speakers right now. His name was Michael Jackson. Mike, if you watch him, man, give me a call, hit me up. His name was literally Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson would come to come to uh, the Jefferson Smurfit every week donating printers, speakers, stuff he had to use in the club back in the day, uh, uh, microphones, stuff he said God told him to give this stuff to me to help me to start the ministry. Hit the share button, y'all. See, when God is dealing with you, let me tell you something. When he's dealing with you about something, he's going to make sure everything comes together and I'm telling me and my wife at the time, Dr. T, praise God, bless her, a beautiful soul. I'm talking about we prayed and trust God for the directions of planning to try to get here to say, God, if you're calling us to ministry, we're not trying to step out and do anything wrong. We're not trying to step out prematurely. We're not trying to disobey our pastor or leave them. I mean, they blessed us going out. We talked to them. We sat down. We didn't just slip a letter under the door. Come on, we sat down like men and women of God, like responsible sons and daughters, and talk to them about what we were tripping on. Dad, I believe God is calling us to start a church in Monk. When I said, I said, you know, God, I believe he wants us to go to Monk's Corner and start a ministry. He said, well, uh, my bishop, I thank God for him to this day. He said, son, I guess we're going to start a church in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. He, and he didn't, he didn't disagree with us. He was right there with us trying to help us to, to hear what God was doing in us. And I'm telling you, and when I tell you they celebrate, I've never experienced anything like that. They celebrated us all the way to the last date that they released us to come here and to his credit, to God's credit, to God be all the glory. We're still together 26 years later. That's still my man of God. Praise God. Amen. So I never left him. Amen. So, but here it is. My, our plans were established. And I'm telling you, y'all, as we look around in 21 years, uh, I'm not patting myself on the back, but we have seen the confirmation of the success, the confirmation of, of the establishment, of the stability. Praise God. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, uh, you know, we see the stability of our church presence in the Monk's Corner, South Carolina area. We see the stability of the church presence being here on the grounds of 106 Berman Street, what it has meant to the community. Amen. In 20-something years, 21 years to be exact. So here we, we are grateful because my wife and I knew we ain't doing nothing unless God, we commit this thing to God. See, we, 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 we're not going to, see, my wife and I never haul off and do stuff, if you will, and then ask God to bless our plans. Mm -mm. 
we're going to submit these plans to God and let him put his hands on it. Because when he put his hands on it, it's going to work, baby. Come on, it's going to work. Hit the share button. I'm about to go off. When I tell you when God gives you a plan, and when you come out of prayer, when you come out of your time of consecration or your time of fasting and talking to God about what you're sensing he wants to do in your life, because number one says plans must be established. Come on now. So when you come out of that thing and God, you committed to him and he, you, you got to understand, when you give something to God, when he give it back to you, oh my God, it's much greater than you. See, when God touched something, that's why when he touched the lights, it became the great lights. He touched the web, it became the great fish. You know, all the stuff, the great sea. He touched the water. Anytime God touched something, give it back to you, it's no longer normal. Y'all didn't hear what I said. We committed heart to heart to him. He touched heart to heart and gave it back to us. It was bigger than us. That's why it's taking all of us to do this work. Glory be to God. It's bigger than a man. It's bigger than one person. It's taking a whole community of men and women of faith. Come on now. It's taking not just men and women of faith here locally, those that are partnering with us across the state lines. Come on, Georgia, Florida, come on, uh, 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 Philadelphia, California. Come on, uh, different parts, New Orleans. Those that are partnering with us uh, all over different states, loving HHIM Church because it's bigger than us. Why it's bigger than us? Because God touched our plans. He touched them and gave it back to us. And then when he gave it back to us, it's, we knew we had to keep praying to God. It's bigger than us. It's too big. He said, just depend on me, child. Just, see, that's why, see, my, 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 my vision, my, my bishop would tell us this years ago. He said, if you got a vision that you can accomplish, you probably gave it to yourself. He said, but if you got a vision that depends on God, if you got a vision that big that it makes you depend on God, then he probably gave it to you. Glory be to God. Come on, y'all. Hit the share button, man. I'm about to go off, man. Hit the share button. Why? He'll give you something so big that you have to depend on him. Mm. God never gives you something that you're going to be able to put your hands on it and you take all the credit and glory. He's going to give you something so big, so powerful, so magnificent that it will require his help. Glory be to God. Come on, y'all. It will require him to help you. That's the beauty. You will need his help to pull it off. And come on, my hymn church family members, my hymn church staff, y'all know it took God Almighty to pull off every endeavor of our church's life. From the building of this thing, come on, from the roof project to the uh, uh, renovating of this facility, come on, y'all, paying it off, uh, getting, it, getting it renovated debt-free, then turn around, paying the thing off. Now we're in a parking lot. We're almost there. Glory to God. We'll talk about that in a minute. We're almost there. Come on. We got up to the 23rd. The man's going to come back because we had our pledges submitted up to the 22nd of December. And on the 23rd, the guy's going to come back to finish the work. And he's going to get all 14000 of his dollars left. Come on, 14700 Because we've trusted God that a whole 100 something thousand that this parking lot was going to cost. And now, y'all, we're at 14000 Y'all would hear what I'm saying. We're at the last little bit. Come on, we're at the end zone. Come on, y'all, we're at first and gold. Glory be to God. What was costing us $100,000 or what they were projecting the 88. And we paid some money out now. We have people to partner with us in the community for this thing. Some of you have sown seed. Thank you very much. Here the plans about the parking lot were submitted. It was a plan that our church had to commit to God. And I promise you this, it wasn't on my plan. It wasn't on my radar for this year. When COVID-19 hit, I told my staff, we pushed this parking lot back. And God said, you can push it back, but I want it done this year. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Glory be to God. Why? Because my people need to have seed in the ground ready for 2021. My people need to have something waiting on them 2021. And if you don't sow seeds into this thing on this, on this year, you won't have a harvest waiting on you for next year. And our church family has always been established like that. We've always sown seed every year to our church, different projects. It just happened like that. It just, it's been just the kind of the, the grace that's been on our church's life. We've always sown seed into their various projects, but some of you know, my Him Church family staff, you know that those projects have set you and your family up. You know that we would not on our own so if there was no projects going on. So God set these projects up prophetically for us to sow into the kingdom to get our lives established, to get our lives firm, to get our lives stable, to get our lives fixed. And God has fixed some of y'all up. Glory to God. Come on, man. Y'all know what I'm saying. Hit the share button. Come on real quick, let people know that Connect the Roll is here. 
You know what I'm talking about, my hymn church family staff. Some of our folk, even in Philly, I mean, sowing seed, getting housed, stuff is just happening because God always sets you up for a blessing. He always gives you plans that will cause you to succeed. His plans is to cause you to be established, that cause you to have, that cause you to walk into blessings and overflow. His plans is to see you, come on now, to get, have an expected end. Come on, to have, to have expectation, to have hope. Come on, to have a vision about, man, we ain't suffering no more. Come on, we're not paycheck to paycheck no more. Man, we can go out every now and then and have a dinner. We can go to the movies every now and then. No, God has set some of y'all up heart to heart. Come on, him church family. Come on, y'all hit the share button, the like button. Y'all know what I'm saying. Those that have been with us for any length of time, you know exactly what I'm saying. When you were challenged to sow that seed in the church for a building or whether it was a roof or, or a parking lot, you know exactly what jumped off after that thing was sown. I mean the supernatural hands of God move. Why? Because plans must be established. And when you commit those things again, I want to I beat this horse, but I'm telling you, when you commit those plans unto the Lord based on the scripture, right? Commit the plans, your work to the Lord, and your plans will, will, not might, they will be established. Glory to God. They will be established. Man, that's strong. Not might, they will, they will succeed. Glory to God. Oh, man, come on, hit the share button, y'all. Let me give you point number two. I'm, I'm just going off. Man, I'm just, I'm just having myself a blast. Uh, uh, number two, let's get to point two. I think we done, we done beat that up enough right there. Point two uh, says, uh, the point is this, plans, again, here it is beautifully, must be submitted to God. Submitted, right? So plans must be established, number one. Number two, plans must be submitted, submitted to God. See, a person that does not submit won't commit. Mm -hmm. A person that won't submit to God won't commit to God. And when you won't commit to God, you won't submit to God. And you won't submit to God, you won't commit, we got a problem. Because the only way your stuff going to succeed if, it, if you commit to work. Mm -hmm. See, that's what verse 3 again says in 16 and 3. says, commit your work. But as I'm telling you, if you don't submit your work, you won't commit it. Mm. Oh, my God. See, some people got a problem with sub, that sub part. Sub, submission, sub, you got to get down. You got to get low. Sub, you got a problem with going under. See, you always want to be on the top. See, you want to be big and little really got you in a chokehold. You want to be big, but little got you in a figure four. Some of you wrestling fans. <laughs> you want to be big, and uh, little got you all tied up and tangled up. Yeah, uh-huh. Submit, submission. See, until you submit or you submission. See, most of us want a mission. You want to be commission, but you're not going to be commission until you submission. See, the mission ain't going to come before you sub. See, sub come before the mission. Mm -hmm. See, sub is the first word before mission. And God ain't going to go commission you if you don't submission him. You got to see true servants understand submission. And then once you submission, then he says you're ordained now for a commission. Mm. Here's that word again, C-O-M. See, because they commit it. See, when you submit, you already commit. I'm going to submit my things to God. I'm committing it to him. I'm submitting. I'm honoring. I, I'm, Lord, I don't know what to do. Give me some wisdom. Give me some direction. And, and so we got people that got a problem with submission. They will never be commissioned. And you know, like everything, everybody that's preaching the word ain't been commissioned. Come on now. You know everybody that's preaching the word ain't, 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 ain't a God that sent everybody. You heard the term that some of us, some of us was sent and some of us went. <laughs> And you don't want to be a, come on, y'all, don't get mad at the bishop. I'm back. The <laughs> bishop is back. Don't get mad at the bishop. Some of y'all up and went. And some of you wasn't sent by your leaders. Got it? See, when you up and went because you thought you had a better word than the bishop, the pastor, the apostle, the preacher, the evangelist, you know, and you just preach your best sermon on your first lesson at the church, and you done did that, and then it wore out. That's all you had was a, a hot lesson. 
And uh, no, 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 this thing's got to be in your heart. God, somebody got somebody to gotta sign off on you and send you. Uh-huh. And, uh, and so some of you just up and went. And then when you up and went, uh, then you're on your own. Now you, see, now you want God to bless your mess. And God ain't blessing mess. No, he's not blessing mess. Uh, you need to go back and, and, and su- resubmit because you got a problem with leadership. And, uh, and the best leaders are those that are submitted. The best, my best sons and daughters of my committed ones, my submitted ones. And I know already that God got a call in, in his hands on their lives. I already know God's going to raise them up to be something great because that's, that's the order of God. See, Jesus, the Bible says, uh, the scripture says, Jesus came not to be served but he came to serve. And he said, the chief, if you want to be chiefest of them all, then you have to be servant of them all. So you got to go low. Some of you don't know how to, some of you don't know how to fall low. You, you, you don't know how to follow, fall low. Fall, submit. You don't know how to submit to others. And your greatness, let me say this, Lord Jesus, your greatness, child of God, will be determined by how great, how, how much you submit to your leader now. Your greatness in days to come will be determined by how, by how hard and how, uh, 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 how hard you serve your leaders right now. Your greatness will be determined by how hard you submit. See, submission is not a curse word. Submission is not a bad word. It's just that you have been trained that it's been a bad word. And then you live a life like a rogue. You, you just, you're just wild. You're wild as onions. You, 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 you're unstable as all get out. You have no stability in your life. You don't know how to listen to other folk. You think it's less than a man that I don't need no bishop and no pastor counseling me and my wife. Well, your, your life always going to be jacked up. You ain't going to never have a great marriage. Your wife gonna always think you're crazy, stupid, and blind. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? You don't want to submit to nobody. You know it all. And she just as miserable as she want to be, looking at you like you just boo-boo the fool. because You don't want to submit to nobody. You think somebody's trying to take your masculinity away. Man, please. You beating your chest and ain't got nothing on it, praise God, and nothing in your head. I'm just saying, wife, don't let nobody tell you I ain't cooking for him. Come on, be a great wife. Don't, don't, don't listen to other people. That, that's your husband. You take care of your family. You take care of that man. Take care of your house. Do what you got to do. You ain't less than a woman because you cooking and cleaning and doing whatever you want to do to better your home. The Bible says a wise woman builds her house. Praise God. Wisdom builds the house. So don't let nobody, don't let these chicks, I'm just saying, that don't have no man try to tell you how to keep a man. They ain't got one. <laughs> they don't know how to keep one and probably don't know how to get one. Praise God. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Don't let nobody put that in your head about, girl, don't, girl, this is. No, no, you do what you have to do because you want to be happily married to somebody. If your husband doing right by you, you do right by him. You got to take your business to the world because sometimes this world right now, this world got a problem with submission. That's, what, that's why Satan got kicked out. S A T A N. Satan, the devil. That's why he got kicked out of heaven because he didn't want to submit. He got beyond, got beyond himself and, be, you know, thought he was bigger than God. No, you ain't bigger than God now. Ain't nobody better than him. Ain't nobody bigger than him. Ain't nobody greater than him. And you don't want to get kicked out of place because uncommitted people and people that, know how to do, do, that do not know how to submit get kicked out of places. Mm-hmm. Hit the share button. Y'all didn't get mad with Bishop this morning. Put me a little chapstick on because my lips get a little chap. Mm-hmm. I'm saying people that don't want to listen get kicked out of places. People that don't want to submit get kicked out. Mm-hmm. Don't submit to pay your bills every month. See what happens. Okay. Don't pay your car note. Don't submit to that and get your car note paid every month. See what happens. Don't pay the insurance. Some of you riding dirty right now. Ain't got no, ain't got no license. Ride. Just ride. Dirty up. This, this, this dirt, this dirty. This, this downright dirty. Come on, man. Hit the share button. I'm just saying, you have to learn that. And guess what? I am a bishop, right? I, I am a bishop, and uh, my bishop, Archbishop Leonard Love, thank you, Dad. I love you. Appreciate you. Come on. Ordained me years ago. Come on. It wasn't something I put on myself. It wasn't something that I wanted to become. My bishop saw the grace on my life, and, uh, and you know, thus, here we are today by the grace of God. I didn't, I didn't call him and invoke none of this on myself because I thought I was worthy of it. I never asked him, I, I think it's time for me to be a bishop, uh, uh, Dad. No, no, no. He, all that came through. Him watching my life, God talking to him, and I didn't even know, man. I was trying to get that pastor thing straight. You see what I'm saying? So, so, my, but, but I always, one thing I did know, by the grace of God, I was submitted to my man of God, and still am today. Still submitted to my man of God. Praise God. Submitted to him. Love him. Come on, there for him, whatever he need me to do. 
I'm there for my man of God and my woman of God. Uh, uh, Bishop Carolyn, I love my pastors. Amen. That I'm committed to them. They need me to do something. They got to talk to me five or ten times about doing it. Come on now. They need me in Jacksonville. I'm there. Whatever they need, I'm there. Ain't got ain't to be no 50, 50 hour discussion. Let me pray about it. Let me be led. No, you're my leaders. And I trust the God in you for my life and my family. And I've been doing that for 26 years and it's working real well. Praise God. It's working real well for my life to be submitted to another man. That's the order of God. See, Joshua was submitted to Moses. Moses was submitted to God. See, sometimes we just want to, I ain't nobody got to tell you when I'm submitted to God. No, you got to still submit to a human. You still got to submit to someone who's going, as the Bible says, follow me as I follow Christ. We, we want to skip that part right there and just want to go straight to God. And see, we understand the military and all that, rank structure. You just can't go to the general. You got rank structure. Come on now, those who have been in the military, you got rank structure, and you work that chain of command. Come on now. You just can't go to the president right now. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying some of y'all want to go right now, but you just can't roll up in his face right now. You, got, you, you can't. It's, 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 it's structure to get to him. You understand? And so with that, we want to say the same thing in life. We just want to go, and you can talk to God. You can pray and all that, but there's still structure in the body of Christ. That's why he gave you a pastor. Come on now. For you to submit to that pastor, that local church, let that pastor cover your life, cover your family. Come on now. There's some things you will be able to do. He's going to teach you how to do it, but you still got to be submitted. I am a pastor, but I have a pastor. I'm not my own pastor. I have a pastor who I am submitted to. Hit the share button, everybody. Glory to God. Let's go over to another scripture. Don't get mad at the bishop. I'm just saying. Come on now. We got to learn how to be submitted people. Plans must be submitted to God. That's their, all there is to it. They've they got to be submitted. Okay, let's, let's do this. I don't want to bore you. Let's look at uh, uh, let's look at another scripture really quick, um, and then we're going to uh, we're going to uh, maybe give another thought before we conclude. Now let's look at we're still there in Proverbs chapter sixteen. Let's keep there. I gave you verse three earlier for one scripture reference. Let's look at verse number nine. Proverbs chapter sixteen, verse number nine says this. It says, "The heart of man plans his way." But the Lord established his steps. Ooh, that's good. That's so good. The heart of man plans his way. My heart is, 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 is being overly whammed by this thought, about these thoughts about X, Y, and Z, right? The heart of a man plans his way. Watch this. It says, but the Lord establishes steps. So the Lord knows that because you're going to submit these plans to me, you're tripping on something, but when you start moving, I'm in control of your steps. Mm. Oh, that mercy. See, that's why the Bible says the steps of a good man are what? Order. God doesn't order a non-driving car. You got to get in the car and start driving, then he'll start steering. In other words, he'll tell you where to go. You can't just, you can't order a non-step. You got to start stepping. Some of you are afraid to step. Some of you are like, I don't know, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I ain't stop. Some of you won't start doing nothing. You just stand there and look like, you know, just like a deer looking at lights. <clears throat> you won't do nothing because you're afraid. You have to take the first step. And once you start stepping towards it, he'll steer you. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. The Bible says here, according to the scripture, it says, the heart of a man plans his way of planning, but the Lord establishes him steps. Why? He's going to make them steps stable. He's going to start saying, no, go to the left a little bit. The, plan, the, steps, of, the steps of a righteous man are ordered. No, 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 go left, go right. Oh, yeah, stay right there. Stay. Go straight, go straight, go straight. Nope, nope, veer to the right. Stay, good, go go straight. And you're going to just be steer, like him guiding you, and, he gonna be, and you're going to be hitting all the right people and all the right pockets of stuff you need to know and all the right people that you need to know and all the right things that you need to know for your success and for your good. He going to do that for you, man. I mean, when I tell you we started this ministry, <clears throat> we just started stepping towards it, and everything started coming in place, y'all. I mean... It's like everything that we needed was there. He made it happen. We kept going towards coming here, and he kept opening doors, opening doors, opening doors. Op we came here first day of the ministry, had a place to, to, to work behind the Red Rob. was our first uh, uh, building center, a uh, ministry center there. And uh, But, I mean, everything was already being opened up. He was just opening doors, but we were stepping towards what we sense he wanted to do in our lives. You cannot be afraid to step out on your dreams. You cannot be afraid... To, after, you, after it's been submitted now, you know, you, you got to submit it, and then you can't just sit back and not do anything. Got it? You, you know, 
uh, I got one of my spiritual daughters who I'm godly proud of her. I mean, she, she's doing her thing, man. Uh, Mama D, sweet treats. I'm proud of her. You know what I mean? She's doing her thing. I'm putting her out there on blast. Uh, unashamedly plugged there. But, I mean, she's doing it. She, she's got the best, I mean, desserts and pies and stuff. I mean, doing her thing. You know what I mean? And just have stepped out, and God is just opening doors for her. Just like it's happening. It's it's booming. It's, and she ain't seen nothing yet because God's just God gonna just bless her so tremendously. And I believe she's gonna be mailing stuff across the country. And I believe she's gonna have a business here, a bona fide it is already a business, but I believe she's gonna have like a, a establishment where she's gonna be baking stuff and sending it around the world. That's how big I believe Mama D's sweet treats is. I mean, I tell you stuff is good, it's good. And so I gotta stay away from her and not let her be loading me up. So <laughs> so not stay away literally, but just, you know, I gotta be mindful <laughs> was he you know, don't want me to test stuff, so glory to God, I have to stay in the gym a little bit longer, but I'm telling you, but my point is, I'm so proud of her because she stepped out, and I got another one of my daughters who I'm godly proud of, you know, uh, 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 Minister D's uh, photographer, just doing her thing, I remember when she was dreaming about that, dreaming about doing things, having her own business, and she's doing graphic, doing some amazing things, but had to step out, an, an excellent photographer, got an eye for excellence, doing things, creative mind, just doing things that's just amazing, just mind-boggling, but stepped out on her dreams. We'll talk about it, but yet went to school, got some further training, but stepped out and did it. Now things are moving. Now she's in business doing her thing. I'm just telling you what you got to do. You got to step, and, and, uh, and both of these ladies, by the grace of God, what? Submitted those things to God. They submitted those plans. They submitted their dreams. Come on, ideas to God. And God has been ordering and is orchestrating their steps every way. And they have seen the blessings of God. Just God's ordering their steps and things are moving. Come on, y'all. Hit the share button. You know what to do. Things must, not just things, plans must be submitted to God. Woo. Woo, yes, Lord. Okay, now, let's give you one more thought for the day. I, 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 think, this all, I think this is all we can handle today. I'm about to jump out of the seat. They told me to sit my little happy stuff down. So I can't even run. I'm just going to sit right here. I, 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 I'm about to run, boy. Because you know what? I see some of you, I see some of you being so stable for 2021. I see some of you being so firm. And watch this, though. Listen to what the bishop has to say on this one. I'm saying I see you being so established. Because you know what? When people put established since 1950, established since 1902, and it's 2020. You understand this thing been around for a minute. That's what it means. That's why people put the dates when they were established. We were established March 1999. We still here. Come on now. That has to mean something. Okay, Bishop done been around for 20 some years. This church ain't just no overnight wonder. And definitely not an overnight blunder. But my point is, <clears throat> I see by the grace of God as I'm looking through the lens of, of the future. By the grace of God, don't proclaim to be a prophet, but I'm telling you, I know when God says and speaks up to my heart, and I trust, I trust God with, 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 with what he shows me. But I'm telling you, people of God, 2021, looking at through the eyes of what 2020 meant and how we thought that this was going to be this crystal clear, and it still is, uh, it's a crystal clear year, it's a year of, you know, 2020, that was all about, everybody was wrapping their whole thing around this prophetic year of 2020, and 2020 has been like, Almost like just wow, not to some of our expectation. We weren't expecting all of this. But I'm telling you, people of God, this 2020 is setting up all of 2021, 2022. It's setting up the rest of the years to come. And let me tell you something. If you can make it through 2020, which you will, by the grace of God, 2021 going to be sweeter as the days go by. And I say that because... The stability. Some of you, some of you had to go through this. All of us had to walk through this. See, I believe that tough times don't last, but tough people do. Okay, and I believe that these times <clears throat> reveal to you who you are in character. Mm -hmm. Hit the share button, everybody. I'm about finished. These times reveal to you who you are. But I'm telling you now, by the grace of Almighty God, by the power of God vested in me, you will have some stability like you've never had it before. 
you will have security. Come on now, like you've never experienced in your whole life. <clears throat> what am I talking about? Mental security, financial security, health security. Come on, health fixed and firm. Finances firm. Come on, life stable. Come on now. I mean, like, stuff's just going to be solidified in this year before it's over. Why God says, oh, yeah, this, this thing really meant to take you out. This thing really was not meant for you to stand as tall as you're standing. Oh, but because you stood and trusted your God, <clears throat> God's going to make everything. You think some of you have been blessed right now, and you've been blessed during this COVID-19. You about to show enough be blessed in the upcoming year, 2021, baby. And let, let me go and share this, too, because I don't want to wait 2021. You about to show enough be blessed March 7th, March 8th, March 9th, March 10th, March 11th, as we're climbing to the December 31st. You about to see the hand of Almighty God pull back, my Lord, the open heavens and just rain stuff out of your family. Because, baby, look here. It's just time for what it's time for. And <clears throat> when it was time for the children to walk across on dry ground with all the stuff in their pockets and around their necks, it was just time. And I'm telling you prophetically, it's time for some of you to be blessed. I mean, when I tell my, I'm talking about this, these blessings are generational blessings. I ain't talking about no little bit of stuff. I'm talking about some perpetual wealth. I'm talking about stuff you're going to see, touch, and then be able to set up for the next three or four generations. <clears throat> I'm talking about God using you to set up for the next four generations. That's some of the stuff about to hit, hit your family. That's what kind of establishment because you're submitting your plans to God and you're, you're submitting these things to God. Come on now. Your plans will be established because you're taking a chance, not a chance, you're taking a righteous resolve to submit these things to God as a child of God should. Come on now, as a woman of God that love God should. As a man who say, I love the Lord. Well, submit your plans to God. Because there's great benefits and benefactors in submitting things to God. When he get it, baby, he's going to order it. When he get it, he's committed to it. When he get it, then we put him at responsibility to lead and guide us. How can it not work? The Bible says that he knows where the, in the crooked places where the wealth is at. He knows where all the, where all the hidden treasures are at. Come on now, that's, he knows where it's at. And he's trying to lead your feet to get it. He's trying to lead your way, come on, to meet those people that, I mean, what, my, my spiritual daughter, she was tripping me out, sharing me how people are wanting these, have, wanting these mama these sweet treats now. I mean, like, now, I want one tonight. You know, like, yeah, it's crazy, you know? And, and she's making it happen. She ain't giving herself no excuse not to make it happen. But I'm telling you, the blessings of the Lord, what? They make it rich and add no sorrow. Baby, this is an hour where we're not about to walk in sorrow, but we're about to walk in abundance. We're about to walk in overflow. We're about to walk in true riches. Come on. We're about to walk in, I mean, when he said that the blessings of the Lord uh, 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 will not add any sorrow to it. I mean, it makes you rich and add no sorrow. We're about to walk in, I mean, when I talk about perpetual blessings, I mean, to full to the overflow till we can't stand it no more. I mean, almost like, Lord, I don't even know what to do. Well, you got to go into prayer and find out who you got to bless next. Because you're so blessed. Lord, I got 15 houses. I don't need all these houses. I'm just talking. I don't have 15 houses. I mean, Lord, I got 20 cars. I don't know what to do with that. Well, I can barely have, you know, I'm, you'll be that blessed. Lord, I got all these millions sitting in the bank. Checks I haven't even cashed yet. Who you want me to bless for Christmas? Who you want me to, who you want me to, what child you want me to send to school, Lord? That's how blessed many of you, by the grace of God, who will follow these plans about submitting stuff to God is going to be. Because you're going to realize when God gets involved with your stuff, child of God, it makes a tremendous impact and a tremendous difference in all of our lives. God is the one who is going to cause things, like I said, to be firm, to be secure, to be fixed, and to be stable. When you have stable, you're able. Yeah. <laughs> when you're stable, you're able. Glory to God. See, some of you don't, some of you, some of you don't, some of you, some of your bank accounts are not stable, and they have no ability. They have no able. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it is a fact. We need stability in this hour. We need to be fixed and firm in what we believe. We know we believe in God, but I'm talking about these principles right now of just submitting those things to God. We're not going to haul off and do stuff for 2021. We're going to get these plans. We're going to write it. We're going to give you some, even some sheets at the end of this lesson and let you start planning what you're sensing. Y'all remember heart to heart. We did it. Do it every year. Uh, we normally do the, uh, the uh, vision boards, but we're going to have these things online, and we're going to make sure that the Hymn Church family gets them. 
where we begin to plan our spiritual goals, our financial goals, come on, our health goals, everything. We're just going to plan that thing out so we can have some sense of direction of where we're going. This 2021 and the rest of this month, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the rest of this month is going to be awesome. The rest of this month is going to be mind-boggling. It's going to be mind-blowing because I don't believe God's going to wait to get it to your 2021. Baby, it's going to start jumping off in this month. It's going to start jumping off in these days, and it's going to start jumping off in these seconds. You need to see God move right now. We don't need to wait 2021. That's going to be awesome by itself, but you're going to start seeing that thing progressively grow every day. We'll start, start picking up. I'm talking about like, it's going to pick up so fast, it's going to almost scare you. Don't be afraid. Just receive it. And matter of fact, I hear that. The Lord said, don't be bashful about the blessing. Don't be, don't be all acting like, you know, <clears throat> you know, just, 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 just I, I, let me share this. Just receive. Come on, hunt your neighbor in the house, a, a fist bump them, and just say, just learn how to be a receiver. Yeah, it's your time to receive. You, you, you are a great giver, but you're a poor receiver. You need to learn how to get ready to get your baskets and your, and your, and your buckets ready, baby, because it's coming. Don't you be bashful. My cake is this. My photographer service is this. And people are going to pay for it because they want quality. People are going to pay for it because they know you're, they, they're going to get some quality service and, they, and, they, and they, their, their lives are going to be blessed and the better because of using your service. Don't you be bashful about people blessing you because, baby, it's coming. You hear me? Don't you be bashful about people want to sow into your life. You receive it. Don't you be bashful about saying, the Lord put on my heart to do, oh, no, you ain't got to do that. Oh, yes, you got to do that, Jesus. Name. You ain't got to say that out loud, but yeah, thank you very much. I receive. Come on, tell them I receive. I receive and pray over. Father, bless him for blessing me and my family. Because the Bible says he's going to bless those that bless you. Come on now. That's what he wants to do in this hour. And you know what, y'all? I'm out of time. I know. We just got started with this party. And I'm cold-blooded out of time. Man, it's crazy. Isn't it crazy? Hey, look, it's okay. We're, we're going to get back on. I, I promise you we're going to get through these points. I got 20 of them. We only got, what, two of them? But well, we did. We, we got two to you, okay? So, look, that's okay. If you will, we're going we're gonna to close out, but I don't, want you to, I don't want you to forget plans must be established and plans must be submitted, okay? We're going to get back on that. We'll get back on point three next week, all right? So, so this is what I want you to do. Don't get off the air yet. Don't leave. We still got stuff we got to cover and go over, so... Please don't, don't get off the air yet. Come on, right where you are, we never want to leave our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We never want to get off the broadcast without giving you a chance to connect with a personal relationship with God. That's what's most important. That's what's going on. Hey, y'all, like anything, who wouldn't want a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, you know what? I believe this personally. Christ is coming back soon, y'all. We, we know the handwriting is on the wall. It's being set up. It's getting, I mean, I don't know if he's going to give us another thousand years. Of course, all of us going to be dead by then. But I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> you know I'm not, not saying to be funny, but if he give another thousand years until his return, then we're all out of here anyway. But my point is, we want to be ready when he comes. We want to be ready. Rather, he comes to get us, uh, come back, and we rapture up out of here. Or if he, come on, just know that time uh, has been good to us, and he, we lived that 120, and we're just ready to go and be with the Lord. But at the same time, Either way it goes, we want to be ready to see our Lord and Savior. We want to be ready, as they say, to meet our maker, and that's important. So we never want to leave our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to connect with a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's important to me. It's important to my leaders. It's important to our staff that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So not belonging the time, prolonging the time. If you are right there, which you are, with your technical device, if you just kind of this, this pause, if you're driving, keep driving, don't close your eyes, keep your eyes on the road. But if you're not doing anything there, you're sitting at home, relaxing, or whatever you may be doing, if you would just bow your heads, and those that are saved, you could just bow your heads as well and kind of help me to pray, because I don't know who's making the decision right now. And this is, to me, is one of the most important things of our broadcast, that we give people a chance to connect with a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you would right there, come on, say this prayer out loud with me. Say, Dear God in heaven, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ to destroy the power of Satan from over my life. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I accept Jesus Christ now as my personal Savior and Lord, and I choose to turn away from the sins of my past to a renewed life in Jesus Christ. You said that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart, that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. 
I believe Jesus Christ died for my sins and that he rose from the dead for my benefit. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of salvation and for accepting me as your child from this day forward. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, y'all. Let's celebrate. Come on, righteous ones. Come on, saints of God. Let's celebrate because we don't know how many have just gave their lives to the Lord. If you just gave your life to the Lord, please hit us up. Email. Uh, hit us up there on, on, online. Let us know so we can send you out some free information about your new profound relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The best relationship you can have with anybody is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, it is the, it is the they said the bum diggity. It is the best relationship. He's the one that you want a relationship with so that your life can be the better. All of our lives, amen, for those that have been any length of time in the body of Christ, our lives have been tremendously blessed and the better because of that relationship right there. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. So we celebrate you. The heavens are rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing. And our church will always outshout the angels. We're always excited about souls, amen, coming into the kingdom of God. All right, everybody. So let, look, uh, with that being said, again, I want to come on. Let's clap for those that gave their lives to the Lord. Thank you very much for those that have tuned in uh, to this broadcast. You know, we love you so very much, and we really want you to be careful out there. We want you to keep wearing your mask. I know, man, we got some stuff coming up for the upcoming year, um, you know, uh, with, the, with the switching of the presidents. So we're, we're, we're going to be praying for our, 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 our new president and the, the vice president. I want you to lift them up. They got a very, uh, uh, a very uh, heavy task before them. Uh, they definitely need our prayers. They definitely need our uh, intercession. And I just want this world to be at peace uh, uh, during these holidays. I don't want y'all cause no troubles in the street. I want y'all arguing with people that, you know, that are upset about this, this whole election. And uh, let's, not, let's not get into no fights or fist fights. Or, man, we got to take everything to God in prayer. Be peaceable. This is the season of Christ in the atmosphere. Most people are most of the time uh, more giving, more kind, uh, because Christ is, 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 is permeating the atmosphere. His, his grace and anointing is heavy during December. It is. That's why people are more nice or nicer during the month of December. It kind of starts in Thanksgiving, and then it slips into December. People are more, normally more nice. And so we thank God that you'll be a part of being nice and kind to others during this Christmas season. Amen. It's going to be a beautiful Christmas for you and your family. I'm going to be back next week. We're going to finish this thing. Uh, we're going to do this thing next week. Start with point number three. But again, I want to. I got a few things uh, real quickly that I need to uh, go over real quick. And I want you all to, again, uh, continue to support my books. Um, my books are doing well, but I need your help. Some of you be on, you know, Bishop, whatever you need me to do, Bishop. All right, so you always reached out. And I don't normally pull the pull the card of uh, that I need your help until I need your help. So some of you have shared with me that uh, you're going to, you know, reach out and be a blessing to me with books. And I do need your, I need, I want your support, rather. I, I, I covet your support. Amen. So, of course, the 365 Daily Inspirational Quotes, uh, these books are online. Uh, the 365 Daily Inspirational Part, Volume 2, and also the GPS, Your Marriage. Some of you, some these are great stocking stuffers, for real, for real, because if you can bless a family or somebody that loves, uh, you know, wake up every morning, kind of read a thought for the day. These books have 365 original thoughts in each one. And they're just good daily reads, like daily devotions. And they're good. And especially, I'm saying especially, you got marital issues, you definitely need one of these jokers right here. Uh, the GPS, your marriage, this could be a good present for you for your Christmas uh, that caused you to have some more years in your marriage. Some of your marriage is so tore up. I need to do a marriage seminar on this book for families and marriages. So some of you got terrible marriages. And uh, your marriage is suffering, suffering unnecessarily. And, but you won't invest. Sometimes we just don't invest in the knowledge and information. My wife and I have been together for 30 years. I got a little something to say to you. Uh, we had a, I thought we had a pretty decent marriage. Amen. Uh, you know, some people say successful, whatever. But I, I, our marriage was decent. And I really liked the girl. I really loved her. And uh, God taught us these things. We, we operated in them. We did them. And by that... Uh, they cause us to have some levels of success. And, um, and you know, I, I mean, it really did. I mean, we were trained by some of the best. My bishop, Archbishop Leonard Love, uh, Bishop Carolyn, Dr. Vernon, uh, uh, Dr. Lady Vernon. We learned from some of the best, some of my mentors over the years, you know. We've learned from, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, Dr. Greenup, to his credit, learned a lot from him over the years, different people that we glean from. But this book right here, this book is our thoughts, our own experience, and it's a workbook for you couples that need to, uh, to, to get through some tough times because some of you, again, have terrible marriages and you don't invest in the tools to make your life better. This book will bless you, I'm telling you. Not just because it's my book. This book will bless your marriage. You need to invest in it. Seriously, you really need to invest in it. And I tell my, my spiritual sons and daughters, sometimes we make things too deep. You go spend $60 on some shoes, a, a watch, they're probably going to be broken another month or something, but some of us won't invest in our minds and our spirits. That's going to cause us to be better people. That's what these books do. They cause you to be better, have awesome thinking, and to, to, to navigate life through having positive thoughts. You know, so we're so bombarded with negative thoughts every day. These books will help you. So again, jalexandertaylor.com uh, is where you can go online and order these things. jalexandertaylor.com is where you get all these books. Uh, some of you say you're going to support the bishop. Well, thank you very much in advance for supporting the cause. Amen. Also, too, uh, if you're going to support all three of those books, then we're, we're going to throw these in for like $5 a piece. These are Dr. T's, a very amazing CD. Uh, this CD is amazing. It's a, it'll be one of my favorites. Uh, her first project, but I mean, and, and as a matter of fact, we got her second project sitting in the chamber to be done by my daughters. <laughs> That's going to be amazing, right? The second project that she was going to do is going to be sang by all my three girls. So we're working on that to get that in her honor and also a DVD of, of seven musical DVD songs that she did off this album, which was classic. I mean, the girl did her thing, and, and I was just proud to be a part of it. So get this. We're going to throw these two in. You'll see it all online uh, for $5 a piece, which the value is way beyond that because it, it, it's more than that. But if you get the three books, those are thrown in. This book here, I don't know what we was charging for this book, 50 Shades of Change. It's a prayer book. Uh, again, Dr. T is one of the authors or one of the authors of the original of, or a original prayer here, I want to say it's 50 different prayers of different authors. And uh, they did this some time ago with my bishop, Archbishop, I'm sorry, Bishop Carolyn. And these prayers are amazing because they're done by women of God. Uh, so this book, again, uh, will, I don't know what the price is thing. What was you know the price, Ms. Musfer? I forget the price of it, but uh, this book, I, I, don't, uh, I can't remember. But look, uh, I think it was like $12 or something like that. Uh, let's say $12 for this book. But this book, yeah, I think it was $12. Fifty Shades of Change, prayers. Some of you that like prayers, this book here will set you free. It's got a lot of prayers in here, and uh, you need to get this for your library again. I'm a man that loves praying, loves different type of prayers. Uh, this book will set you free, okay? So get this, invest in this. We would greatly appreciate it. Go to, again to J, uh, jalexandertaylor.com is the website. It pulls up there, and uh, we'll be more than happy to service you with that. Hey, look, last but not least, I want to share again with my Hymn Church family. Uh, thank you again for hanging in there with me. Please don't get offline. Thank you for those that committed to pledge with us on the parking lot. Uh, the parking lot, again, will be commenced. The work will be uh, recommenced on uh, December the 23rd. It will be a wonderful Christmas present for us, praise God, uh, that the guy will be finished probably... Uh, his goal is to be finished on Christmas Day. And so it's going to be a wonderful thing to finish up our parking lot. We're probably going to come out here and record, show you those that have donated any amount of money towards it. We was asking those to donate $50 and, uh, as we start this thing. Uh, the pledges for those that made pledges on the, excuse me, the day that we met here on the grounds. Thank you so very much. You know what your pledge is. I'm asking you to have that pledge in by December the 22nd. Uh, for those in the community that want to sow, those that are online want to sow $50, $100, $35, $40, whatever, $5, $1,000, whatever you want to sow, please sow it. Uh, even though we made the pledges, y'all know how pledges go. It was just a verbal thing that people made uh, until all the money gets in, then it all gets in. Amen? But again, the balance of our pledge is $14,700. It's less than that because some money has come in, but that was the, the, the remaining of what it's going to take to finish the parking lot. So again, thank you for... Uh, for those that want to make a pledge, don't want to contribute to help us to finish. We're almost finished, y'all, and we will be debt-free. No owing nobody, nothing. Glory to God for the parking lot. So that's going to be fun. So again, uh, for those that are returning tithes and offerings, we can't do anything else. The only thing you do, Bishop, I can't do nothing on the parking lot, but I can give my tithes and offerings. Then return your tithes and offerings. You know what to do. The mobile app, 
the PayPal, the means there at the bottom of the screen. Thank you very much. I love you and appreciate you all so very much for all that you're doing. And last but not least, thank you all, my Hymn Church family, for showing your boys some love. December the 4th was my birthday. Just turned 52 years of great age. I'm grateful for life, strength, and health. Uh, I'm in the gym working it out, praise God, trying to keep my sexy on. Uh, but it's okay. We're going to keep working it out. But look, thank you all for my, uh, my leaders. I, I, I sent out something for bottles of cologne. I'm telling you, all have been tremendous. Amen. 30 bottles of cologne. I mean, still coming in. I appreciate I wanted 30 bottles of a particular cologne. Uh, one scent that I, this is my scent, praise God. But thank you all for making it happen for me. It was a, it was a definitely a dream come true for me, but I appreciate those that have cashed at me, those that sent loves, gifts of love. You're sowing money still into the Bishop, uh, Bishop JT 365. Thank you cashing at me with the dollar sign before. Thank you very much. I love you and I surely do appreciate you. Okay. All right. So again, next week, same time, same channel. Come on, you know what to do. I like it like we always do. Just tune in. But remember these words. I love you all, Him Church, Him Church forever. Remember these words from Acts chapter 17, verse number 28. For in Him we live and move and have our being. And by the way, it's all about Him. <laughs>